Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to cover the bridge design pattern. It is quite a simple design pattern. The definition for it is that it's trying to separate the implementation from the abstraction so those can vary independently. It may sound familiar and you have probably already used this pattern without knowing, uh, kind of because it's embedded in C Sharp, but let's go over kind of like the problem that it solves and if you find yourself in this problem, it will be very easy to recognize what sort of mechanism you can use to solve this problem. Say we have some kind of abstraction, like a vehicle, right? This could be a car, this could be a truck, this could be a, I don't know, what else can be considered a vehicle, plane to some extent, uh, maybe a ship even, I would argue, and maybe a train, right? So there could be many vehicles, uh, transportation, uh, whatever abstract class that you can think of. In our case, I'm just thinking in terms of cars and trucks. Those are different. They require different licenses to actually drive them, right? You need to have special license in order to drive the truck. You are you have less field of vision, so you need to know more and be aware of more. Anyway, this is not a lesson on how to drive cars and trucks. I don't drive. All right, so we have a top level abstraction, which is a vehicle. Then we have Lada or Volvo right? Which is an implementation of the vehicle, right? So somebody took a vehicle and they've gone ahead and implemented it. And now we have a lower level abstraction of the vehicle. So we take the vehicle and we turn it into a car or we turn it into a truck and any other examples that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. This is where we are going to have essentially an exponential effect. If we try to add one more make, we get two more classes. And if we add one more class, we have to add that class for all the makes. Well, as well as depending, do they actually make that type of car? But that's like situational. Hopefully you see the point. We don't have like a literal one-to-one -one scaling. This indicates that the solution is not scalable. Let's say you need to implement one change and a thousand different things have to change. Uh, that's not scalable. It's not maintainable, etc. And if we try to, you know, reshuffle the things, we are going to end up at the same place. So we have a vehicle. We extend it into the lower level abstraction into a car and a truck. And uh, again, when we try to implement the Lattice and the Volvos, that's when, again, we get multiples of classes and we get this class explosion, right? So amount of code increases, your code base becomes harder to understand. Uh, how do we solve this? This is where a little bit of sprinkle of indirection comes in. This is where we basically, we just take the vehicle and we stick the make inside the, the abstraction. So the abstraction now essentially has a pointer to the implementation, right? So we have a different abstraction for the implementation level and the implementation lives completely separate from the vehicle, although vehicle does maintain some sort of reference. So now you can see, even though we add another make, this does not force us to implement more cars or more trucks for that specific make. And this is essentially the bridge, right? So doing this instead of this is a bridge. So you're applying a bridge design pattern. Now to dive in a little bit deeper into the implementation detail of this specific example and in hopes that potentially you can spot this happening in your code and uh, perhaps applying a solution to it. I did give the vehicle a few more methods, right? So for example, what could happen? What could this look like if we actually go ahead and try to use it in the production system? We have the vehicle with the bridge towards the make so that you can start the vehicle and the make is going to have some kind of common functions, right? So I think uh, people with computers and cars are quite similar. Sometimes, in, especially during the older ages, you'd have to perform a ritual if something doesn't work, like, right? You blow on the cartridge, you slap the TV, you, I don't know, roll the batteries in the remote. You do all kinds of crazy things, right? Uh, same thing here. If your car doesn't start you have your own ritual and that would generally depend on the car as well, right? We have the vehicle and in order to start it, we perform a ritual and we start the car. And then I also have an abstract class. Are you allowed to drive the vehicle? And uh, we would have the implementation first in Lada for the make. This is where we would perform the ritual um, or to like hit the car. And starting the car, it's not, not a trivial thing. Uh, I don't know two things about Lada, so I'm just imagining it. Imagining it. Anyway, um, then we have the Volvo. Again, we perform the ritual and we start the car. So depending on what make you buy, uh, it's gonna uh, starting the car is going to look different. And then are we actually allowed to drive the car, right? Uh, we have the car where do you have a license, car license. Yeah, good. All right, cool. Uh, truck. Do you have a special truck license? 
to you and uh, whatever logic that is pull user from database pull license from license provider database uh, check user age against or check uh, record of whatever hopefully you can kind of see where that is going to go the point that i'm trying to make is this is already the implementation with the bridge design pattern in mind imagine if this wasn't a bridge what would happen essentially you would get the braiding effect or like the complexity effect where you have railroads so if we imagine the make is going down one railroad and then we imagine the car abstraction having the other railroad right so you have two railroads and they're not intertwining right so they're you don't get complexity because they're not braiding okay so when things are jammed together that's where you get complexity that's when things get hard and you have to dig around we would have complexity when we're intertwining classes and every time we would implement the Lada or the Volvo, we would also have to bring the relevant method, right? So there would be a level of duplication here where on our Lada car and Volvo car, we would have to, on both of them, implement the has license method and the same thing for the truck. We would have two functions. This is a place where you would perhaps try to create a vehicle helper class and uh, it would uh, you, that way you would take the same operation from two places and kind of put it on to, uh, under one roof and at that point you may feel like you've solved the problem by adding a helper class and uh, removing duplication that way and there's a fine grained difference between being able to solve it with a pattern and being able to see a pattern like this or having a utility class like the helper and in general helper classes i would try to avoid them as much as possible there is probably a more well-known pattern that is in there in instead of the helper class so just be cautious there if you're creating helper classes you are probably dodging some kind of valid design pattern so give that another thought but nevertheless this is one type of way that you could implement this the other way that c -sharp actually provides you in the real world example are generics right really simple here you have your abstraction going one way list i collection i enumerable list i collection i enumerable i read only collection span there, there is tons of tons of these collection classes and the actual implementation integer string don't know why i said it the, this is the other way string integer you don't get string list you don't get integer lists uh, the actual list detail is separated from the abstraction of the list so the actual implementation is separated from the abstraction the list is the abstraction the implementation is the thing that the list is meant to hold and that's pretty much all there is to the bridge design pattern whoa hold up look this is the stuff i used to torture myself on the weekends now it takes time to digest this and package it up into these videos so if you did enjoy the content please like subscribe if you want to see more uh, leave a comment if you have any questions and if you want to be part of the community that I'm building, make sure to join my Discord server. I also stream on Twitch Wednesdays and Sundays, 6 o'clock London time. I have also opened up a merch store. So if you do want to support me, don't just donate. Buy from there. Links to all of that and my other social media are in the description. Hope to see you again and have a good day.